Hey you! Yeah you! Are you constantly dying because you can't find food? Are you getting sick all the time because you don't know what you're doing? Are you sick of it and trying to find a guy that would help you to start in Daisy? Well, I got you. Daisy has one of the hardest learning curves when it comes to survival games. But in this guide, I will give you the basics on how to get started in Daisy in 2023. In this video, we're gonna go over five different topics. The symbols, food and water, sickness, loot spawns, navigation. Symbols. Daisy's is a survival game, which means you've got to be aware of the state of your body. The symbols can be very overwhelming at first, but I will go over them to make it easier to understand. In the right bottom corner, you should have by default five icons. They can variate in different colors depending on your state. These are the colors from good to bad. White, which is the best you can have. White with a gap. Yellow. Red. And red flashing. First, you got the health symbol. You already guessed it, but this shows you how much health you have. Your health can drop down by starving of food, by being sick, by getting damaged from a fall, or by being attacked by an animal or player. Next, we have the water bottle icon, which we call the hydration icon. This shows you how good you are on water. Next to that, we have the apple icon, which shows you how you are on food. Then we have the blood icon. This shows you how you are on blood. You can lose blood by getting a cut from a zombie attacking you, a player, or an animal. By sliding down ladders without gloves, or by punching a wall door with your bare hands. Which, I don't know why you would do that, but... If your blood level drops down to red flashing, you'll be passing out a lot. To prevent you from losing blood, you could use a disinfected rag or bandage. Make sure it's disinfected, otherwise you can get infected with blood illness. If you don't have disinfected racks or bandages, you need to look for alcohol tincture, which can spawn in medical buildings or in these types of shanks. Then we have the temperature icon, which shows you how you are on temperature. This icon has a different kind of state system than the other icons I just showed you. By default, the icon should be on white, but it can variate from red, which is hot, to yellow, which is a bit above normal, to white plus, which means you got the heat buff from a fire. This means you don't have to worry about getting a cold for a while. To white, which is the default temperature, to light blue, and to dark blue, which means you are super cold. Now that we covered all the icons, let's go to the next chapter. Food and water. To get food and water, you need to search the houses in the area. I would advise you to do this slowly and not run all the time, because this will slow down burning your calories and your food will last longer. Make sure to also check the apple trees in the area, as they will often spawn apples, plums or pears. Don't eat rotten food. Normal and dried food is safe to eat. If you are still struggling to find food, make sure to check out for dead bodies. You can cut those up to get bones and guts to make a fishing rod. If you combine the guts with a knife, you can make a rope. You can also make rope with two stacks of six ranks if you combine those. Combine the bones with a knife to make a bone hook. Grab a long stick from a bush and combine it with your long stick in order to make a simple fishing rod. Next, look to the ground with a knife in your hand to get the option to dig for worms. Once you got a worm, combine it with your bone hook and at last, combine the hook to your fishing rod. Also, you get bloody hands from cutting up bodies and animals. Make sure to wash your hands before eating or drinking. This prevents you from getting sick. Now that you got the fish, you need to cook it, because you can't eat it raw. For more info on that and on how to hunt animals, check out this guide. There will be a link to the video in the description or click on the card above. For water, you should look for wells in the town. You'll learn the well spawns over time. Don't drink straight out of a pond, a river, or a bottle with water that you found, as this could be dirty water. This will make you sick, so only drink out of a well or empty your bottle first and fill it up at the well. This is also a quicker method to drink and you can carry water with you everywhere you go. You can also fill a cooking pot or a canteen with water at the well. If you found chlorine tablets at a medical building, you can use those to clean dirty water. Next up is sickness. I could make a whole video about this topic alone, but we'll address the most important stuff. As I said before, make sure to wash your hands when you cut up an animal or body, as this will give you some vanilla. You can wash your hands in any type of water. Also, don't eat raw food, as this will also make you sick. The same goes for a human meat, because this will give you a crazy laugh and a blurry shaky view. This will only go away when you die, 
So only do this when you are really desperate. Loot spawns. So every type of building has different types of loot spawning. Industrial buildings such as these will spawn vehicle parts, melees, and other industrial related stuff. Houses like these will spawn clothing, food, melees, and guns. You would likely have a better chance of finding guns in these houses or at the police stations, short for PD. You can also find armor there, mostly a step fest, which is not the best, but this will give you a higher chance of surviving a gunshot or tanking any damage in general. Medical buildings. As you guessed, it will spawn medicine to protect you from any kind of sickness. It will also spawn bandages, medical clothing, and NBC parts. I will make a video that will go more in depth about NBC itself. Navigation. So right now it's not very important to know where you spawn. You learn the town and places over time. The only thing that is important is that you need to go inland to find more higher tier areas such as a military area or one of the airfields. For more tips about navigation check out my how to navigate guide. Link will be in the description and in the card above. Now you, we got to the end of the video. Here are a couple extra tips that might help you. In Daisy you have zombies which will attack you if they see you. When they are in a group, try to ignore them when you can. If you get a zombie on you, you can attack by holding your right mouse button and left to swing. If you walk backwards and you hold right mouse button, it will block the hits. If there are too many zombies, try to lock them in a house or go in a house with a lot of windows. You can punch the zombies through the windows and even these doors from this guard house. If you hold shift, you can sprint until your bar on the left will be empty. This is what we call the stamina bar. You need to wait until it's filled up in order to run again. If you press C, you can go into sneak mode. If you hold C, it will make you lay down. If you press these buttons again, it will put you back into walk mode. Holding spacebar close to a wall will make you climb over it. This will not work with every wall of course, only with small walls. I hope this guide was helpful. Now you should at least get a better start in Daisy. If this helped you, make sure to drop a like as this will help boost the video out to others. Also, consider subscribing for more Daisy guides like this, Daisy adventure videos, shorts and live streams. I stream here on YouTube every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So hit the bell if you don't want to miss it. Also, let me know in the comments if I missed something. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!